everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Bridget and I am currently in Bowling Green. And if you don't know, Bowling Green is New York's oldest park. It's located at the southern tip of Manhattan and it has a fascinating history. In 1770, a new statue was erected here. It was that of King George III. It was a large statue of him on a horse. His arm was extended. It was actually modeled after an existing statue of Marcus Aurelius. The statue was commissioned by the New York General Assembly as an act of reverence to the king, but also as a way of thanking him for repealing the very controversial, much hated Stamp Act. So this gilded lead statue was erected in 1770 and around it, around the green, they built a fence in 1771. This is the fence from 1771. It's still here. Well, it was moved at one point, but it's the same fence. You can touch it anyway. So imagine the fence and the statue in the middle. Now, as you know, the 1770s in America were quite turbulent times. Fighting had already broken out by 1775. The Declaration of Independence wasn't officially adopted until July 4th, 1776. And it wasn't until five days later, on July 9th, 1776, that the Declaration of Independence was read out loud in New York City for the first time. Right after that reading, a group of soldiers, sailors, and citizens rushed to Bowling Green and using ropes toppled that statue of King George III. At that same time, they also vandalized this fence. They hacked off the ornamental bits that used to be right here that were described as royal crowns or iron balls. We don't actually know what it looked like. I have tried reaching out to museums, asking about their archives, if there's any sort of better description of what this used to look like. We don't know. But the cool thing is you can actually still see the hack marks from that day. Interestingly, later that same year, New York City would actually be in British control. So what happened to the statue? After it was toppled, the head was hacked off. Eventually that head was stolen back by the British, sent off to England, and hasn't been seen since 1777. So it may still be out there somewhere in someone's attic. The rest of the statue, the body, the horse, that was sent off to Connecticut to be turned into musket balls. In the end, it ended up making something like 42,088 musket balls. That's what's said. Nine musket balls were found in New Jersey at the Monmouth Battlefield State Park that were found to have the same chemical signature as fragments of the statue. And how do we know the chemical signature of the statue? Because fragments of it still exist and you can see them today at the New York Historical Society. So let's go there now. This is so surreal. It's sort of hard to wrap your head around, you know, that this is part of the statue that stood there. That's crazy. I think other bits of the statue still exist. I think maybe the museum has some other ones. I think a different museum or other museums have other little bits of it that were recovered. Some pieces had been buried. So these are all the rediscovered fragments of the statue that were not turned into musket balls. Also what's interesting is that the pedestal that was underneath the statue, that still exists today. And it is in the museum's archives. It's not on display, unfortunately. That marble slab was at one point turned into a gravestone and at another point it was actually the front step of a mansion. Read the video description for more information. But it's so cool to know that it still exists today. That was so cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video.